Hello, this is Justin Austin again, um, talking about the importance of fuel water separator on your boat. Uh, almost every boat nowadays since uh, I don't know, 2006 and up, for the most part, has a fuel water separator. Uh, this, this filter is basically the main catch-all for everything from your tank, getting pumped from the pumps at the gas stations into your, your boat. Um, this filter is 10 micron. Um, it traps very small amounts of particles uh, so it doesn't make it into your fuel injection system, your carburetor system. And you have to have it nowadays because with the ethanol, uh, the water makes it into your system, it is, it's going to cost you a lot of money. The downside is people back in the day used to run these and they would never change it be on there for two years or so. Well, with the ethanol and the water content, you need to change these probably every three to six months depending on the environment you're running in, so you don't run into any problems. Perfect example, this one here is six months. You can get an idea what this filter was supposed to look like. Uh, as soon as you start touching it, the filter, but I'm actually busting through the filter. This guy was an explosion away from bad nightmare problems. Uh, you do not want to let your filter get like this. Uh, a lot of times people don't even know if they have them. Uh, something you should ask your technician about. And if you don't have one, you need to get it installed because it will save you money. Um, besides that, I have a boat here we're going to go ahead and change one out on. Um, when you do change these, when you take it off, a lot of people just want to take it off with the new one on. Well, you really want to see what's in your fuel system. So we're going to go ahead and, it's an old pickle jar. Uh, we're going to change the one on this boat here behind me. And, um, See we get. Okay, we went ahead and located this fuel water separator. It's located uh, in the transom here of this boat. Uh, pretty easy to come off, righty tighty, lefty loosey. Put a wrench on it. Once we get it spun, you're going to have some fuel leak out. This one's on a little bit of an angle, so it's uh, running the top. Now at this point, we'll go ahead and take it out and dump it into our, uh, into our cup and see what we have. All right, the fuel water separator is out. Uh, at this point, this is our Gatorade jar. I'm sorry, our pickle jar. We're just going to dump the contents of this in here. Let's see what we have. As you can see, we've got uh, pretty decent fuel here. Um, there's just very slight particles, trash located in the bottom of the jar. Uh, fuel smells good. Uh, if you're smelling it, so make sure it smells uh, clean, uh, ready to use kind of deal. You notice any kind of second layer of particles in here, you probably have water or base separation going on with your fuel from being old. Uh, at this point, we know that most likely our boat fuel system and our tank is good to go. Uh, we can go ahead and install our new fuel water separator here. Uh, I like to pre-prime these, basically fill them with fuel first uh, and screw them on. Uh, it basically allows uh, for easier priming of the fuel system. Uh, at this point, I've already uh, added fuel to our fuel water separator and it's now basically time just to go on. Uh, you do want to wet the O-ring on top with just some fuel or something like that. This is going to go on hand tight. Okay, there's no need to put a wrench on this. Uh, one of the main reasons is you can scratch the paint. Uh, and if you're in any kind of salt environment, you can speed up corrosion. There we go, nice and tight. Uh, we'll go ahead and prime the primer bulb, uh, make sure there's no leaks. Uh, and that basically concludes uh, changing the fuel water separator.